Thanks for tuning in live to Toronto Business Summit, the largest business marketing event in Canada. And now your host, Max Carter. For some background information, my product is a project management training course. And I got the idea when I was working and I needed to get certified myself. So, um, so I, I took training courses myself and they were really expensive. Mm -hmm. Like I think I paid like one grand to take a course online. So I just thought maybe there has to be a better option that there could be an affordable way for people to get certified. So that's how I got the idea. Um, from it, and I know there was demand for it already. Um, so, but if I was gonna do things differently, I guess what I would watch out for is I was building a business on someone else's business, so the certification was owned by a different certification body, right? Mm -hmm. So they could actually decide to change change uh, the rules at any time. They could say, like, you know, we're we're not a allowing third parties to offer training for a certification, right? Something like that, and bam. Your bits, you're out of business overnight. So I guess that's one thing that um, I didn't even realize when I was doing it. So that's definitely something that I would take into consideration starting another business. So is is webinar still a good way to get um, new leads into the business for? And what what uh, what businesses is it good for? Is it is it good for everyone or? Yeah, um, absolutely. So I think it is good for. Um, E, e, that definitely e products are really good. Like any digital product, it's probably really good. It's good to like just get awareness, get your word out there. Like there's nothing better than getting someone's attention for a full hour, um, mm -hmm. and you know, in one one place because we all have such short attention spans these days. So um, I mean, definitely for online courses, it's great. I I mean, it's still even today, like a hundred percent of my sales is from webinars. So um, that. That's that's I think that's really good. Although I am still looking to ways to diversify and uh, try trying to grow the business um, outside of webinar channels. It can be also applied probably to offline businesses such as, for example, uh, yoga studio, for example, a meditation session, and then you can at the end you can ask um, you can you can provide a free meditation session, and then at the end you can probably ask people to sign up to your private lessons or maybe buy your uh, program to learn how to meditate, yeah. right? Yeah, absolutely. So this yeah, will work for pretty much everyone. Yeah, absolutely. You can definitely ask people uh, from offline to sign up for a free webinar with you online and then give them a coupon code or something to join your live um, classes. Yeah. Um, I think that's great because if you were going to host a free session, um, then you had to you know, pay rent and, uh, yeah. you know, hire people to go and, and represent you and whatever. So your cost will be higher if you're going to do a real life seminar, right? So webinar is a good, good bridge between, between that. Nice. And, um, so what are the main ingredients for a successful webinar? Um, I guess a couple. Um, I mean, um, well, the first thing is you, you need people to join your webinar, so you need to know where your target market hangs out. Um, for me, I was kind of lucky because um, uh, my tar a lot of my target market actually just hangs out on classified ads, mm -hmm. which are free to post, so, you know, Kijiji Craigslist. Um, so those were easy to post, and I just came up with a structure to, like, to, um, to like, get those, um, to get those ads up once a week, um, and I just hire someone off of... Uh, uh, what's, what's the word called? What's the site? Um, Elance, yeah, yeah, to do that. It's like three bucks an hour or whatever. Um, also to get people, um, well, I kind of use a couple strategies. Should we go into this now or later? I think we should go now as because I know I know you did a successful webinar that generated about 2,000 an hour. So we'd like to, I'd like to outline um, a step-by-step -step process like a funnel which goes how you market it to cold audience yeah. and how they became warm leads and then into the purchases. Yeah, sure. Okay, so let's just start with the first part then of how I got people to join. So um, for me, it was classified ads because that's because uh, like a lot of people were looking for training on classified ads for my segment. So that worked for me. Um, the second thing was because this was a professional service, so a lot of my audience hanged out on LinkedIn. 
Um, so, so, um, so what I did was, um, I added a couple of influencers in project management, project management onto my LinkedIn. And once I get that, it got both them, then I had access to all of their, uh, second degree connections, mm -hmm. right? So once I got access to the second degree connections, then I could add those people. Oh, okay. So awesome. because LinkedIn, if you were trying to message someone through email, then they, you had to upgrade to their premium. LinkedIn, which I didn't want, and I think you have a certain number of emails you can do, right? So I didn't do that. So I just first started by adding in some influencers, and once they accepted my request, then I had access to all of their second degree network, and I was able to add all of their second degree network. So I knew those people were also interested in project management. Um, so the influencers, you just look for groups in your niche, add the amends because the admins are probably the most connected people, and then just go into those groups and just start adding adding those people, because you know, if they they were in project management related groups, chances are that they might be interested in certification. Yeah. 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 So I had a script written up, and, um, and then so whenever someone accepted my request, I would just send them a personalized uh, message saying, hey, thank you for connecting with me. Just so you know, I am doing this free workshop, you should come out and let your friends know. So those were like personal outreaches and then I and then I found a way to like um to um to standardize it. So I actually hired someone from uh, Elance and I just gave her my login information and uh, so <laughs> yeah so she messaged like you know a hundred people for me a day and then I just logged in and I replied when People replied, but she was actually the one sending out all my uh, welcome messages for me. So that's a secret we shouldn't tell anyone. <laughs> it wasn't actually me sending those out. Oh, that, yeah, oh. that's that's good. And um, so, you, how many how many people did you get sign up for the first webinar? And what what did you offer? Like, what what was your um, kind of yeah. headline topic for the webinar? Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. So just. Um, just like one quick point about the uh, LinkedIn strategy. So, you know, I hire someone from Elance for like three to five US dollars an hour. Um, just, you know, if you were trying to run a LinkedIn ad, it would be three to five dollars per click. Mm, yeah. I think LinkedIn ads, uh, I forgot what it started with. It was either two dollars or three dollars per click that I started with. Oh, wow. So, yeah, so um, so I think my LinkedIn strategy was actually like it had like a really good um, ROI, and I guess the third way that I had people coming in was I wrote a lot of really good blog posts, and those started ranking on Google. So you know, a lot I got a lot of leads just from SEO that came in. Um, whenever you write a blog post, it's just important to have a content upgrade at the bottom to collect emails, so then I could invite them later on to to the webinars. And then the last strategy I try was just Facebook ads. So like retargeting. So like people who visited my sites before, just retarget them and say, hey, did you, you know, remember to sign up and uh, and got people those ways. So those are the four main ways. So just to summarize, it was classified ads, LinkedIn, Facebook, and SEO for me. But those work for my niche. Um, I guess you had to experiment to see what uh, worked for, for your niche. Yep. And then... Um, to your second question, and which is how how I structure um, how um, I entice people to sign up. Yep. Um, so I so I looked at a couple of uh, different lead magnets from competitors in my niche, and one of the and one of the competitors' um, their lead magnet was how to get certified in forty five days. Mm -hmm. And then I saw that, and then I was like, well, I can put a spin on this. So. Um, my lead magnet for uh, for people to entice people to sign up is how to get certified in six weeks. <laughs> so, um, so I just put a spin on it, and I think it's good because it's it's actionable, so it gets people results, and they also get some time frames. So I think those are the two things. Um, I think that makes up a good uh, lead magnet, and also like something believable. Because if I put like how to get certified overnight, like no one would sign up because it would just be like, you know, that's not possible. There's so much material that they had to learn, right? And then when you kind of um, when you tell them how to get certified, it almost guarantees that in their subconscious mind that if I take this course, I'll get certified. So it gives them their solution to the problem they're looking for. So that's important for your headline. Right. Yes. Yeah. 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 
All right, and you got you got how many people joined you on the first uh, webinar? Uh, so I think on my first one, I had sixty nine people mm -hmm. who signed up. Yeah, but on the last one I did, I had six hundred oh nine. So. Oh, wow. So, so yeah, so the, the, the business has grown. And most of that um, is by organic traffic, though. So just, um, and that just takes time. Like, it just takes three to six months for certain, for you to rank for certain keywords. Um, I think it's just about, it, just like, you know, um, link building at the end of the day. It's just having relationships in your niche and trying to guest blog for other people and making friends with other people so that they will link back to you. Um, and that, that just takes time, ultimately, to, to build. So um, so just be patient. I mean, I've been running webinars for over a year now. So, um, so, uh, so yeah. Um, anyway, so 69 people joined my uh, signed up for my webinar. I think 20 or so people actually showed up. Which is actually pretty good because yeah. usually you get about ten percent of people um, showing showing up to your uh, live events, and uh, and um, and I made I forgot it was three sales or four sales from that, so three or four sales from that okay. for me. Yeah. And that was yeah. an hour hour uh, long webinar. Where, what did you yeah. What did you um, What information have you provided through that hour? Yeah, sure. So I provided them with like the step by step process and how to get certified and some like tips on how to fill in their applications and um, and just like a, like really good exam tips, mm -hmm. like like really valuable information that they couldn't just find on like a blog post. And that just came from knowing the market and, you know, knowing what they needed to um, get certified, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And and to to and to let them know that you know what are you talking about you know the industry and the courses exactly for for yeah. these people yeah. yeah yeah so I literally gave away my best material in the in the one like try to put together the best material that I could in in, in like forty minutes um, so like the way the way that I structured my talk was like okay if my best friend came to me and she want she or he wanted to get certified and I only had 30 to 40 minutes to tell them, you know, what they needed to know, what would I say, you know? Because if it's, you're thinking about it from the perspective of your best friend, then you're not thinking, okay, how do I make sales? How do I, you know, structure this talk that, yeah. that makes me the most revenue, right? You're not thinking about it from that perspective. You're just thinking about it like, how can I help this person? And I think when I made that shift in that mentality, that's when my sales really went up because you know I had my first webinar probably made around 1k um, but then my next three webinars made zero and that was because I lost in touch with my audience so mm -hmm. you know it's not just about um, it's not just about like doing a webinar it's not the actual act of doing a webinar that makes you money it's about communicating webinar is a tool at the end of the day um, it's it's not a means to an end. So it's not like when you start doing webinars, bam, you're going to start making all those sales. You still have to structure your webinar correctly, right? So, I mean, the way I look at it is like I always think about it like how can I help this person? And when I go into it from that mindset, I think people pick up on the vibe that I'm just trying to help. So they're more receptive to it and they, they trust me more. And I give them so much, so much value up front that um, – that you know, it really became a no-brainer for them to choose me over someone, yeah. someone else who didn't give them as as much value. So, uh, generally, you know, try to give a lot of value during the first thirty to forty minutes, and then go into your pitch in the next, you know, twenty minutes or so, and then leave something for Q and A. I think it's a great point uh, that webinar is not so much as a, as a selling tool. It's it's a lot um, a relationship building tool where you kind of get introduced to your audience, they, they see you, they interact with you, they, they get a feel, do they want to work with you? And, and as well, don't be afraid to share the information because huh, everyone can go on Google and find everything they need right now. And yeah, yeah. I mean, none of the stuff I do is proprietary. Um, uh, yeah, but I guess it's the value of the content um, 
that I'm providing that people are looking for. And even if they already knew some of the content, I mean, I got, I mean, all the content I have, you can find on Google as well. But it's the fact that I put it all together into one place and made it simple for them to understand. So they're coming for the experience. Yeah. So like in the digital world, right? Like we are also so bombarded with information. And sometimes we just lose that human touch to it. And I think that people more and more are looking for experiences more than, you know, being able to do things fast, right? So. I think people are coming to my webinar to have the experience of me teaching them, mm -hmm. right? And so that they don't have to go on Google and do 10 hours of research to find all the things in one place. So um, that's the value of webinars. Exactly. And the value of convenience that you provide to your audience. And yeah. Right. All right. And um, so what did you, what are the main things you learned from this experience of doing webinars? Is it, is it something you'll continue on doing? Is it, is it worth yeah. on getting into? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, webinars, I still feel it's a great way to, um, to make sales because um, at the end of all my webinars, I gave a, I gave a coupon for the next 48 hours. Mm -hmm. um, so if you know someone wanted to buy my products then buy my courses, then um, they get, you know, uh, it depends on the webinar, I've tried $50 off and tried $100 off. So it depends on the webinar, the, the, the discount that I give. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. Um, uh, I, yeah, I mean, it's still a very effective tool because you can combine relationship building with scarcity. So it's like, oh, I only have 48 hours to buy this, or else the price is coming up. So that gets a lot of people wanting to buy the products. Nice. Is it is it hard? Do you need a lot of tools and do you need a lot of experience? Is it something everyone can do? Is it? How hard is it to do? Yeah, I mean, everyone can, I mean, if I did it, <laughs> I think everyone <laughs> else can do it. Um, it. The tools are really easy. So um, I don't use any complicated uh, um, tools. Um, I just use YouTube Live. So I just set up a, a, um, a video with YouTube Live. So I think they did change their rules though. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I embed the, the YouTube Live uh, uh link into onto my own web page yeah. um, and then I have a chat box on the side which is also free so I got it from chat chat tangle chat tank, I think that's how you pronounce it and it's, it's free um, you can just have the chat box there and then literally what I'm doing is I have my iPhone here and I'm reading the chats on my iPhone while I'm doing um, doing my presentation so it's really simple setup all I have is a phone to read the questions I have my laptop to speak on. Sometimes I put on my headphones for better quality, but that's about, that's about it. Um, one thing to note is that YouTube did change their rules. So now I think you do have to be a YouTube partner so that, um, so you had to sign up for their uh, YouTube ads program um, in order to be able to embed videos on your own site. So even though you, you like, even though I don't even run ads on my YouTube videos because, you know, I have my pitch at the end, right? So I don't want to earn like a dollar from yeah, yeah. <laughs> YouTube for every time they play an ad or whatever. Um, you can always set the monetization to off, but you have to be a YouTube partner um, in order to be able to embed videos now. So mm -hmm. you just have to, you have to sign up for their partners program. So that's just like an FYI because like, when I when my video stopped embedding, I was like, "What's going on?" So it took a lot of googling to actually find out that that was actually the problem. So I had to sign up for their uh, program as a YouTube partner. And um, as we said, um, I know a lot of blog posts. They say uh, you don't even have to go live anymore. You can just do a slight presentation, or you can. And I think it's you can. But essentially, you still need to build price. You, you, you still have to go on, I mean, live and talk to your audience instead of just showing them deck slides and then a pre recorded presentation. Yeah, I've tried, um, I've tried uh, what are they called? Evergreen webinars before. Yeah. And then, like, and then it's like my sales just went to zero. Mm -hmm. It's like, it, it didn't work for me. I'm not saying it doesn't work in general, it just didn't work for me um, because. 
people don't sense that real sense of scarcity anymore because you know if it's evergreen then how can you actually make sure that right. that that um you know your offer is actually good for 48 hours right yes. um i think i think there's a way that you can do it with the infusion socks that you just you know uh, disable the link after 48 hours mm -hmm. uh, but again i don't use complicated tools like infusion soft or anything so um so you know it, it's hard to set up scarcity when you have mm -hmm. an evergreen uh webinar and then people also pick up that it's it's an evergreen webinar because you know when they're typing the chat box you're not actually saying what they're saying so they know that it's not actually live so they pick up on that and it's important at the end of the webinar to have a call to action yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you, you, I think you absolutely should um, entice people uh, to do something. Um, so for me, it was buy my course. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't see the point of you not doing an entire webinar and not having something to sell afterwards, right? Then, you know, then that kind of defeats the business purpose of doing webinars. But it doesn't have always have to be like buy something. It could be yep. like sign up for a free trial if you have like a SaaS product um, or I don't know um, or like you know get a download my lead magnet or something yes. so that they get just something that pushes people further down the, the funnel in yeah. your business yeah well yeah, yeah this was great um, any last uh, thoughts or comments you would like um, to give our audience um, just get started <laughs> um, and don't get discouraged when things aren't going out you know, going the way that you know you want it to go I mean I have three webinars that made zero dollars so you know you can get through it it, it, it does work um, you just have to make you know if if it's not working for you then it's chances are you're not doing something correctly so again it's not the act of doing webinars that makes you money it's it's the fact that you're providing value to people through webinars yeah. that ultimately makes you sales. So um, don't hold anything back. Give them your best information in 30, 40 minutes, then make your pitch. Yeah. So um, just, you know, keep trying and, uh, and uh, I'm sure you'll get there. Oh, this was excellent. Thank you, Helena, for the interview. And no um, we'll, um, I'll include all the show notes at the bottom and the ways to get in touch with Helena and all the projects she's working on. And yeah. All right. It was nice talking to you. Thank you. Thank you.